Good evening, everybody. Hope you had a good Sunday afternoon, good Sunday morning, good weekend of rest. I would like to share something with you this evening from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Wow. Here Paul was praying. He was praying that that the Lord would that the Lord that the word would move swiftly through run swiftly and be glorified. Just as just as it was with them being receiving it and taking the word and going forth with it and spreading it. This is what he was praying for. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Same today, not everybody has faith. They may have some kind of faith in, some, in something else, excuse me, in something else or in another so-called religion, but they don't have the faith of Jesus. They don't have the faith in Christ. And this is what it says here, unreasonable and wicked. Unreasonable and wicked. But the Lord, but this is but this is the Lord. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. He was confident in the Thessalonian church that they would continue to do, to love others in Christ Jesus. And knowing that they would go through persecution, go through insults, going through times of troubles in their lives, that he prayed that they would have patience. Hard times brings patience. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. See, he guides us. He directs us. He'll put people on our hearts that we may not even know. There's been times in my life where I prayed for people. It's like, who's that person? I never heard of that person's name before. That person needed prayer at that moment, whoever that person was. And it was the Holy Spirit putting that name upon my heart. And he does that today too. We may be going from we may be going from job to job and he and he knows some and he knows another person's heart that will take you in. So he'll put that name upon their put your name upon their heart. And he'll give you the first choice for that job, for that position, whatever. He'll put your name upon that upon their heart. Just this last week, this this is the last week at a previous school I'm working at now, and next week I start working at another school. What had happened? A former co-worker who got promoted to a position at another school. The Lord put his put my name upon his heart, and he texts me. And that following week, got an interview with his boss. And he accepted me, and I accepted him to start working there in two weeks. I said that to say this, the Lord puts our names upon other people's hearts. We just got to pray and ask and seek the Lord for that. Lord, please put my name upon people's hearts. And this, direct your hearts into the love of God. It's in us. He puts other people's names upon our hearts to love them. They may be in a circumstance that we can love them. And love doesn't necessarily mean giving of wealth as we are so-called programmed to. 
Oh, you're showing me love because you gave me five dollars. No. I gave you love to show you Jesus. I gave you that five dollars to show you Jesus. To show you the love of Jesus. We are commanded. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment from God to maintain. Look what it says here. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. John 14 states that we are to abide in him. Jesus commanded. He said, if you abide in the if you abide in the vine which is Jesus we are the branches he is the vine and if we abide in him if we keep looking we keep watching if we maintain the love of God in our lives for our Lord and for others Things are going to happen in our lives. Things are going to happen in other people's lives. We're fighting the good fight of faith. That's part of fighting the good fight of faith is maintaining that love in God and for God and for Jesus, abiding in Him. If we love Jesus, if we have that relationship with Jesus, we have that relationship with God the Father because that's the only way to God the Father is through His Son, Jesus. Excuse me. That's why it's so important, important to maintain that love. But yet we live in the last days. We live in the day of peril where, excuse me, where wicked men grow more wicked every day. And other people's love grows cold, grows cold toward God, grows cold toward others. This, too, is part of living in the last days. The love of some. Jesus said that the love of some will grow cold in the last days. That flame of love, leaving the first love, how does their love grow cold? They leave the first love, their first love, which is Christ Jesus. It grows cold. Or they become puffed up with knowledge and understanding, and it only stays up here and doesn't come down here, so it's activated out here. But again, loving God, loving Jesus, loving others, it's not a suggestion, it's a command. And through loving Jesus and having that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and staying in here and staying in the Word and prayer and in loving others. How do I love others? Seek the Lord Jesus. Ask Him to open up your eyes. Not just these physical eyes. Sometimes we can't see the need with the physical eyes. Sometimes we, see, we can only see the need with these eyes, the heart's eyes, the spiritual eyes. And these is the eyes that's the most important. And that's only by the faith and the trust in the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, love, and into the patience of Christ. That tells me when we share the love, which he, when we share the love, try to share the love with others, the enemy is going to come at us. The flesh is going to come at us. The world is going to come at us. To try to, to stop us from sharing the gospel. But we're to be patient. We're to endure. This is easier said than done. I've learned this in my life. It's easier said than done in most cases. But I'm thankful that through it all, the Lord has revealed to me the fruit that was produced. And he will show you and reveal to you the fruit that's being produced or has been produced in your life through others. 
God bless you. And remember, to die is to gain, to live is for Christ Jesus. You have a blessed night.